Welcome to the world of mesh wearables, private off-grid mesh communications on your wrist. So this is the Lilygo T-Watch Ultra. Essentially, this is a watch device with a built-in LoRa radio. And you can see here, it's running our MeshCore firmware. So with this device, we can use it to communicate with other users on the MeshCore network. You can see here, there's the public channel. And we can see here, it even has maps built in as well. So you can see a full picture of the mesh. Now, as you probably know, I'm a big fan of having standalone mesh devices. So something like this that I can put on my wrist and not actually have to carry another device around is game changing. Now, obviously with MeshCore, you can also run the smartphone app written by Liam Cottle. It's absolutely excellent. And you have to use an external radio like this one here to connect to the mesh because obviously the phone doesn't have lower built in. So let's take a closer look at the hardware then. So the first thing you notice, it is actually quite chunky. And when you turn it around on the side, you can really see that it has got a bit of depth to it. That's because there's a massive battery in there. Um, but for sort of size difference, you can see here, this is a G-Shock. And I mean, this is my daily driver watch. And, you know, I'm getting used to wearing this thing now. And to be honest, for the benefits that it gives you, you don't have to carry around an extra mesh device and I can still you know talk to everyone that I'm talking to and um, without actually carrying around another device is pretty cool so if we look on the side of the watch here we've got two buttons the bottom one is like the sleep wake button so it turns the screen on and off effectively and then you've got another button up here which is not mapped in the mesh core firmware at the moment turn it around on the other side you've got this kind of like cover which reminiscent of a like a sort of two-way radio um, waterproof kind of cover there and basically that reveals the USB-C charging point so that's just for charging and firmware flashing and then we've got like a, a little reset button which has actually lost its little pin that was in there that was sticking out so you don't actually have to stick a pin in there and then there's the micro SD card slot there for maps your ID and all the other settings that are stored on your SD card for MeshCore that thing there is basically like an opening for a speaker um, I believe so there's like a speaker behind there so I think that's kind of like a water resistant kind of speaker I don't know that just pops back in there the bottom nothing really to see four screws you just take them off and the back comes off it's pretty easy to sort of service now interestingly enough the antennas are here so they're kind of underneath this um this Lilygo logo here that one there is the gps antenna and then that one at the bottom is your lower one so you can see here what it is i'll take this off in a minute but what you can see here see that little bit of metal trace there they've kind of like done something clever they've like printed on a metallic antenna onto the onto the plastic case i'll come on to that in a bit so start with the show on this watch really is this amoled display it really is nice and it looks so good with the mesh core firmware running on it um scott has actually added on here a brightness feature as well so you can kind of you know dim that down to night mode or turn it back up it's it's very bright and it's easily readable um, outside it's a really nice display so this watch has gps as well you might notice these soft keys as well you can just basically tap that as an enter i've actually turned gps off at the moment because i was testing battery life um, which believe it or not this is an esp32 and it's running at about 18 hours at the moment with the gps off with it on it's around 14 so anyone that says esp32s don't can't have good power optimization um, you're wrong so yeah you can talk the GPS on and off by just tapping that there and then exit and the acquisition is really quick as well um, it really doesn't take any time at all to um, acquire the satellites it's very very good and your time which is at the top which is initially received on the GPS um, is stored on a real-time clock so it has a battery backup inside for that real-time clock this just vibrated to alert me I've got messages there's 18 messages on the public channel at the moment that I haven't read which is crazy it's getting so busy around here so yeah you've got a vibrate feature which obviously alerts you to new messages there's no sound supported at the moment on this but to be honest with the vibrate feature it's not too much of a problem so how usable is this device then as like an everyday carry mesh device well the software is great obviously Scott's done a lot of work on this to get this working as well as possible so you've got you have got can <laughs> what's going on here you have got canned messages which you can bring up which makes entering messages pretty easy you can edit these as well on the device but you've also got a keyboard as well which you can use now this is a little fiddly but you can do it with a bit of practice <laughs> and you, you will, might hit different letters and it, it can be a bit frustrating but 
it's probably going to improve you know as time goes on it's a small screen hey i can deal with it it's not a problem battery life as i mentioned i'm getting about 14 to 18 hours on this it lasts the same pretty much the same as the t deck plus here which again just lasts the same as my phone really it, i just put it on charge every night and and that's it just use it all day i can see the comments now oh shame it's esp32 because it's power not power efficient blah 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 the reality is you're not going to be able to run an os on anything other than you know an esp32 or something with a bit of horsepower that's just that's just facts so yeah i don't know why everybody says oh esp32 is terrible basically with esp32 if you turn the wi-fi and the bluetooth off and you do clever stuff with like clock speeds you can get these things to last ages so so yeah that's my little rant i see all these comments all the time the battery inside here is an 1100 milliamp hour battery and yes it takes up pretty much the whole depth of this rear panel so that is why you've got quite a fat back on it <laughs> but even so you know 1100 is still you know quite a conservative amount when you think that there's a 2000 i think over a 2000 milliamp hour battery in there anyway who wants to see a tear down so i don't usually rip apart new devices straight away i like to test them a little bit first just to make sure you know everything's working as expected out of the box um but yeah i wanted to take this apart to bring me on to the next thing that i'm going to talk about and that is the kind of rf performance of this thing so i mentioned they've got antennas inside um and they are kind of like 3d printed or printed onto the actual um case so you can see those kind of white bits either side and the corners they're antennas so you've got an antenna for lower you've got an antenna for gps and you've got an antenna for um like an nfc device there as well so this is my scroll of like where the antennas are placed in this device so you've got wi-fi lower and gps and the pcb basically just has little pins that touch those those traces and um, that's a close-up of the lower antenna so you can see it's like a sort of closed loop design with a radial that kind of goes out and it goes outside into the strap kind of bracket and loops back round. but i just found this wasn't working very well at all so this is a signal of the watch reported by my repeater and the repeater is only like 15 meters away so you can see it's like minus 115 and the snr is minus 4.5 now i'd expect this to be in the 80s the 70s the 80s and the the SNR should be plus six, something like that. But yeah, so I ended up doing some modifications. So on the board, because they use these little pins that just kind of touch onto those traces, it's pretty easy to add like a pigtail or another antenna. So I just literally carefully removed those um, little pins and just soldered on a little rack antenna, the one that comes with the uh, the rack whiz block. And then that meant I could actually tuck that inside the casing with the hope that it would work better. And lo and behold, it did. The first test I did with it was much more what I would have expected at that sort of close range um, near a repeater so so far so good with the modification i'm not going to get too excited just yet because i need to do some sort of definitive tests to make sure um, it is making as big of a difference as i've seen in that first test there but i will say this it is very difficult to design antennas on wearable devices because you've got all sorts of factors in play you've got you know your skin as soon as it touches your skin your skin's got moisture in so it you know affects the impedance um, that's another thing the antenna used in this is like that kind of closed loop design and you know that's going to be very 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 sensitive to um, impedance issues so things close by it I would have thought it's going to knock the resonance you know of that off quite a bit the previous version of this watch because there was another version of this watch made prior to this one um, which I think had mesh tastic running on it they had like a paper antenna in the strap I'm wondering whether that may still be the better way to go um, with the strap but yeah the problem is how good can it get with an internal antenna unless you had like a little sma on the side and had a big antenna sticking up it's not exactly what you want on a watch though is it in my town here i've actually worked on the repeater infrastructure so that it can deal with devices you know with bad antennas like this so it is possible for me to walk around the town um, my local town with a t deck with an internal antenna in my pocket and still receive most of the messages on the mesh um you know so a bit like how a mobile phone 
kind of network works. You know, you don't see big antennas on smartphones. They're usually kind of around the outside of the device or part of the sort of body of the phone. So that's part of the hobby that I actually really like. And that is getting, you know, really good coverage in an area. And that's what I'm kind of continuously working to do here. So overall, I really like this device. I'm going to show you a couple of features on here that kind of made their debut. So these are like mesh core features on this uh, watch that are now being rolled out to um, the T-Deck. So on the public messages, you can now sort of go into a public message, tap on it and see the repeaters that that public message has come in via. So you can see here that particular message was via Nismo 3.0 repeater, hit PR3, and then it's hit Hartford Omni, which is my repeater. And then this watch has obviously heard that directly. So cool to be able to do this, you know, how many times did we do long fast on Meshtastic? And you don't know where these messages are coming from. You don't know the path. You don't know anything. But now we can actually see where each individual message come from. I mean, yeah, mad. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought, eh? And you can also do this with um, repeaters as well. So if you go into a repeater here, um, this is like a seven hopper. Um, by the looks of things, um, is it seven? Might be more. Um, and yeah, you can see here. Uh, all the repeaters that have, have basically been hit on its route to me. This is a long old way as well. Um, did we say it's 57 kilometres away, that is. I mean, it's long for, for uh, you know, here in this terrain. Um, but so, yeah, you can see that. And that is due to a new repeater. This particular repeater that's just been set up is DDRC. So if you're in the, like, Hemel Hempstead, North Hants, kind of Bedfordshire area, get on Meshcore because... It's absolutely rocking and rolling. You'll be able to get to get to Hartford now from there um, and beyond, you know, into London as well. It's it's really starting to change. So these these um, new features on this uh, on this watch here are actually already in the um, in the T deck. If you go to the website now, you'll be able to download the um, the new firmware. So you can see here that there it is, and you can just you can see that. We've also got canned messages as well um, for the T deck. Um, and I think there's a couple of other bits as well which are more advanced. So that's about it guys. Love the watch. It's going to be coming very, very soon, I believe. I think it's like not, not even pre-order yet. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be testing this more and more. So join the Discord. We've got a new official MeshCord Discord now and we started to migrate away from my own one. It's getting too big. It's bigger than me now. So let's you know move over there carry on the discussions there so i'll be posting more stuff about this device on there as well and yeah enjoy have a good weekend catch you next time